A notice in the New York Times in 1902 announced that Spirit of the Times was at an end in Solvin and noted some of its credentials, including E.A. Buck as editor and president, Elihu Root as a director, and William B. Curtis as manager and editor. Who was William B. Curtis? The Times notice closes. For over 20 years, the late William B. Curtis, widely known as the father of athletics, was connected with the spirit of the Times in an editorial capacity. His writings on athletics were read with interest all over the United States and in many parts of the universe. While an internet search for father of athletics will bring up many results, Curtis was considered so primarily because, as the transcript telegram wrote, one, in his youth, in which he was a famous athlete, some of whose records have never been broken, in 1868, Mr. Curtis made a lift in harness of 3,239 pounds, the most remarkable performance of the kind on record. Two, he founded the New York Athletic Club and with it brought amateur athletics from England to the United States. When Curtis was born in 1837, amateur athletics were unknown, the transcript telegram writes. Doing what he loved, Curtis died in 1900. The transcript telegram of July 3, 1900, under the headline, The Father of Athletics, reports William B. Curtis, founder of the New York Athletic Club, who for the last 20 years has been affectionately called Father Bill Curtis, was killed by a fall on Mount Washington, New Hampshire, yesterday. It is supposed that Mr. Curtis was killed in mountain climbing. Perhaps he fell down one of the tremendous declivities that are features of the famous mountain, or perhaps after two score years or more of experience in climbing, he was killed by a fall of only a few feet. One of his peculiarities was to never wear an overcoat, even in midwinter. Mr. Curtis was the founder of the Fresh Air Club, and he met his death upon one of its regular outings. Every summer, members of the club make a three weeks tour through the White Mountains. Five days after their deaths, the New York Tribune reported that they were caught by a fierce storm and they died of exposure while trying to push on to a place of shelter. The next day, July 6, the Vermont Phoenix reported that they perished from cold and exhaustion in a terrible storm of ice which enveloped the upper part of the presidential range of the White Mountains. They were attempting to make their way by the bridal path on Mount Washington, where they were to join at the summit the members of the Appalachian Mountain Club, who were holding their 35th annual field meeting there. Curtis's body was found at Lake of the Clouds, two miles from the summit, and Ormsby's body was only an eighth of a mile from the summit. The storm was the most severe ever known on Mount Washington in the summer. Icicles 12 inches in diameter hung from the eaves of the summit house, and the platform in front of the house was covered with several inches of ice and sleet. The wind was so furious that it would have been suicidal to have ventured a dozen feet from the platform.